This is lesson 2 of 16 lessons on how to build a Joomla website. The topics in this lesson are Joomla benefits, alternative content management systems, and website builders. Before choosing Joomla, I looked at a huge range of web building solutions. You might not be convinced yet that Joomla is the best solution for you. So in this lesson, I'm going to explain why I went with Joomla over the hundreds of other options. If you're convinced that Joomla is right for you, feel free to move on to Lesson 3. Here are the main points that attracted me to Joomla. Firstly, it's free. If you're developing low-cost websites, you need a low-cost CMS. Joomla is free, which allows you to use it for even the most basic of sites open source. One benefit for people new to web development is that you don't need to understand code to create a website using Joomla. However, experienced developers appreciate that Joomla uses an open source model. The underlying code that powers the website is freely accessible and therefore a developer can change the look and function of the website. Cross-platform the software is not dependent on your local operating system, so it doesn't matter if you use a Mac, PC or Linux. And when it comes to hosting a Joomla site, you can choose a host that uses the Apache server, which is usually run on the Linux operating system, or Windows IIS. The majority of Joomla sites are hosted on Linux powered servers. Hosting is discussed in later lessons, and please don't let these terms frighten you as everything you need to know is explained clearly. Support. The greatest criticism of open source applications is the lack of support. Joomla has an extremely large user base, which means there are a lot of people available to answer your questions at the Joomla forum. We have our own forum too at www.buildajoomlawebsite.com slash forum. Long history. As there are so many CMS products available, some of them do disappear very quickly. If you make the wrong choice, you're stuck with software that has no support or ongoing development. Joomla is here for the long term and has a history dating back to 2000. There are thousands of extensions. Extensions are programs created by third parties that extend the functionality of Joomla. Examples include shopping carts, photo galleries and membership sites. There are thousands of Joomla extensions available, so when you need to add functionality to your site, there is a good chance that a solution already exists. Some are free, some are commercial and require a payment. The majority of extensions are also open source, even the commercial ones. Secure. Joomla is very secure. However, like any software, you need to keep it and any third-party extensions up to date. It also helps to use a web host who understands Joomla well and keeps their systems up to date. Popularity. Since 2006, Joomla has been downloaded over 30 million times and it's estimated to power 2.8% of all websites. If you plan to build and maintain your site yourself, rest assured that if you run into trouble, there is a solution. Joomla's popularity means there are thousands of developers you can hire to help with anything you might find is beyond your ability, such as building a custom application. The purpose of this course and my other training is to help you build your own website. However, if you decide you need help for some or all of the development, you'll find a list of Joomla developers under the resources menu of our website. If you're a web developer, you can leverage Joomla's popularity to help sell your services. Your customers will feel more at ease if you tell them that you use the world's most popular CMS that is supported by thousands of web developers. That means if they ever want to change developers, then it will be easy to find someone else to take over their website. Now, of course, you don't want to lose their business in the future, and the whole point of using Joomla is so clients can manage their own site. But this assurance will help you win more business. Developer friendly. 
there are some additional features that will be of interest to experienced developers. I've already mentioned that the Joomla core and almost all third-party extensions are open source. Developers also might be interested to know that Joomla uses the MVC architecture, object-orientated programming, and Joomla 3 incorporates the Bootstrap framework. When I weighed up these benefits, Joomla looked like a good option. But what about other popular content management systems? There are two big contenders, WordPress and Drupal. Drupal is along the same lines as Joomla. WordPress was built to be used for blogging, but these days it offers a lot more. Now, there's nothing like a software comparison to spark a debate, and as you would expect, I'm somewhat biased towards Joomla, but I will try to be objective. There are actually some really good features in these other products. Let's start with WordPress. WordPress was originally designed as a blogging platform. If you're not familiar with the term blog, it's short for web log. These sites contain a series of articles written by one or more authors on a particular topic. But WordPress has evolved and is now used to power lots of other types of sites, not just blogs. Let's take a look at the interface. This is a typical WordPress installation. The latest post is displayed at the top and includes fields such as the date and the category. You can also create static pages. Both blog pages and static pages can include a comments box, encouraging feedback from readers. This is the administration interface. A post includes a title and the associated content. It's really simple to use and overall WordPress is an excellent product. But here's a few things to consider. Joomla articles can be easily arranged in a blog format. It currently lacks a native commenting feature, but there are a couple of free, excellent extensions available that will give you that if you want it. This is one of the features I demonstrate in my How to Build a Joomla Website from Scratch course. Those who are used to Joomla find a couple of annoying things about WordPress. Firstly, there are various post features that may or may not be displayed depending on the chosen theme. Features such as the posted date, the blog category and the author name. These features are easily controlled on a Joomla website, but in WordPress you often need to delve into the theme's code, which can be an intimidating experience for beginners. Also, the content items at the side, which are called widgets in WordPress, appear on all pages. Joomla calls this type of content modules, and they can easily be allocated to all or specific pages, providing much more control of what content appears on which pages. Another point is the sort order. With blog pages, you tend to want to display the most recent post at the top of the page, and this is how WordPress works but there might be occasions when you want to display the posts in, say, alphabetical order. Joomla natively provides many sort order options, such as sorting by date, author name, alphabetical, or your own custom order. Now, to be fair, these are relatively small issues, and they can be managed in WordPress with either a plugin or by altering the code. Joomla is sometimes criticised for being overly complex and therefore hard to learn. Some will see this as being complex, but I see it as being flexible, which you will appreciate once you start using it. Of course, if something does more, it takes longer to learn it all, but I've designed this course to teach the essentials so you can get up and running quickly. So, despite the fact that WordPress can be used for a lot more than simple blogging, that is still its core strength. If that's all you want to do, then I would seriously consider it. But before making that decision, have a think about your future needs too, as you might find that Joomla has the functionality you'll need later. In any case, if you decide to take your learning further and purchase our bundle of advanced training called Beyond the Basics, I include a bunch of WordPress tutorials so you can learn both systems. Now let's move on to a CMS called Drupal. 
Broadly speaking, Drupal is more developer orientated and Joomla is more user focused. Developers who favour Drupal do so because they find it easier to manipulate and create new functionality. However, if you're not a developer, you'll find it harder to learn to use Drupal than Joomla. Here is the default installation. Adding content appears easy at first as you just add a title and enter some content. But by default, no editor is included for the body section, so you can't easily format the content. Some developers prefer this because they like to enter formatting code manually, but for beginners, you'll need to install a plugin to get an editor. Drupal has a steeper learning curve than Joomla. It also doesn't have as many templates or extensions available. If you're a website owner, I would give it a miss. But if you are a developer making sites for yourself, you might consider it. There is an important distinction here. If you are making sites for clients who will be controlling the content, you should think twice. The interface is not intuitive, so you might find yourself spending a lot of time supporting clients instead of getting on with your next project. If, however, you're a developer and making sites for yourself, you might prefer Drupal. I don't have much experience with it, but I have read that it's nicer to code for Drupal and that the developer community is, well, a little friendlier than Joomla. Drupal used to have several advantages over Joomla, including a content construction kit, a better storage system, and better access control. However, the current version of Joomla now handles this either within the core or via extensions. Another way to get a website constructed is to use an online website builder. There are several of these services that initially look promising and perhaps for basic sites would be okay. However, each time I try one of these, I find myself battling to get it to do what I want. The platforms are inflexible and so you often have to make compromises. You're also locked into the platform, so you can't move your website to a different host. The biggest challenge though is that these days most websites need some sort of functionality like a feedback form, photo gallery, online shop, membership system or custom application. Although many of these platforms have a range of add-ons, they don't go anywhere close to the huge range of options available with Joomla extensions. You're very much locked into a particular architecture that might work in the short term, but it's likely that you will outgrow their capability in the long run. So there's a quick wrap up of why I went with Joomla. It can take a little while to get your head around it, which is why you're watching these videos, but once you've set up your first site, I'm sure you'll love using it. This concludes lesson two, which covered Joomla benefits, alternative content management systems, and website builders. If you haven't already, please download the companion workbook for this course. This course is available on various sites, so you might find a link to it below this video, or in the exercise files section on the site you're on now. Alternatively, you can get it via my website at www.buildajoomlawebsite.com. Just go to Tutorials, The Basics.